A very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to Bajirao IAS Academy. Today is 4th July 2023. Today we have certain important articles which will be very helpful for your exam preparation. So let's move into our important articles. Let's start with the quotation of the day. Every day is a chance to get better. Don't waste it. See, in your life, each and every day counts for a better life. You should work hard on each and every day basis. See, this is called the discipline of your life. If you want to take rest after achieving and after accomplishing your dream, you can take the rest. Until and unless you are working towards your dream, every day is very important. You should work better to achieve your dream. This is the yesterday's question. Which of the following activities of the Reserve Bank of India is considered to be the part of sterilization? Option B, conducting open market operation. Option B, oversight of settlement and payment, settle, payment systems. Option C, debt and cash management of for the central state government. Option B, regulating the function of non-banking financial institutions. The answer for this question is conducting open market operation. Yes, the option A is the correct answer for the question. What is it today's question? Consider the following statement. And the first statement is, Attorney General of India and Solicitor General of India are the only officers of the government who are allowed to participate in the meetings of the Parliament of India. This is the first statement. Second statement is, according to the Constitution of India, the Attorney General of India submits his presentation when the government which appointed him resigns. Which of the statements given above are correct? Option A, one only. Option B, two only. Option C, both only two. Option D, neither one, nor two. You people try to give answer for this question in the comment section. We will give you the answer in the tomorrow's discussion. So these are the important articles. Let me introduce that. In the short mutiny, the tarnishing of Putin's aura of power. See guys, in the first article, the author has tried to give uh, the comparison between the Wagner group and the importance of defense, the defense ministry. And also he compared the power of the leadership in the Russia and the importance of war for Russia. And he also uh, prescribed about the mindset of the people in the Russia. He actually he said, what is the dilemma for the Putin's mind? Why he was not able to solve the problem of internal uh, in his inner circle? So we will look at this article in a very vivid manner. Wait for a minute. And the second article is India should refuse America's NATO plus bite. What is this? What is this? Actually, you all know USA want India to join the NATO plus initiative. There is a NATO initiative and there is also a NATO plus initiative in which they included the five other members. We will look at this. What is this NATO and what is the NATO plus and what are the significance it poses for the India? If India joins the NATO plus, then what will be the complications will occur to India? We will look at this article in a very vivid manner why India should stand neutral and what will be the best outcome by standing in neutral. So, without wasting time, let's move to the first article. This is the, in short, literally, the tarnishing of Putin's aura of power. In this, the author has first tried to introduce the power of leadership in Russia. If you see, uh, you all know in your lifetime, you have witnessed this one. This is the Russia's Red Square. It got incorporated in the 1935 during the Stalin era. Uh, when the Stalin was the uh, president of Russia, he got the uh, engineering map for this building. Uh, actually, the engineer tried to give the two models. One was containing the small building and another was the big building. But what the Stalin did, the Stalin did the signature in between middle of this both the picture. So, the engineer don't have the guts to ask the Stalin, sir, which building do you want to be constructed? So, because of fear, it is said that the engineer has tried to build both the buildings, one is small building and one is the big building. But the small building without any big uh, windows, but the big building will have the big windows and many designs. So this is the power of leadership in the Russia. Actually, the Russian leadership always tried to have the commendable fear in the people. Instead of having love, they want to create fear in the people so that they maintain the good regime for themselves. So this is the power of Stalin. The same power is applicable to Putin also. Putin also used to rule like a king. He, he don't allow anyone to come over him. You all know he has been ruling nearly for 23 years. So he is like a, he's like a king warrior in the Russia. But 
what is the problem going on in the inner circle of Putin? Why he has failed to address that inner circle problem? Let's see the story. What happens? Actually, if you see the Russia's uh, recent, uh, what is what you say, the recent development because of Wagner Wagner Group, the mercenaries they launched a mutiny against the in, uh, Russian government, and after that. Lukashenko, who is the president of Belarus, who entered into the arena and he made a broker and he solved the problem with agreement with the Prigoin. After the agreement, Prigoin got released from all the criminal cases and he will be get asylum, getting asylum in the Belarus area. So this is the up to today's development. And the author has tried to say that Russia is a such a region that people possess very good patriotism to that country. If you see, the Wagner mercenaries has launched a mutiny and they ca captured the South Southern Russia military headquarters. Okay, and they tried to move to the Moscow. And what happened in the country where a public criticism of the war can land in a land a citizen in jail. If you if you criticize the war when the Russia is involved in war, if you criticize the uh, war, then, the, then it will lead to the ultimatum that they will put you in jail. You cannot speak against the state. But in that powerful state, one person named the Prigoyin, who is Evgeny Prigoyin, who himself worked as the Putin confidant, very close to the Putin and the chief of the Wagner, did not only just talk against the war, but also he took a mutiny path to come over or come against the Russian president itself. So it, it seems to be the Russia has become weak. The Russian leadership has become weak. And also see the situation. Actually, the Russia was in the existential battle with the Ukraine and with the West. So in, during this time, if someone is arising in the mutiny, then it ultimately shows that the Russia's leadership is somewhat becoming weak in this regard. But the author has has, you, has tried to give you a holistic image for the problem. He said that there is a strategic mistake in the Russia's action. What they did, actually, when the war started with the Ukraine, the Russia's mindset was they don't want to continue this war for a very long time. You see, uh, whenever Russia invaded any country, in fact, if you see the Georgia's invasion, Russia invaded the Georgia in 2008 and the annexation of Crimea in 2014, Whenever they try to invade or annex some places, they do in a very quick manner. So, same like that, they also want this Ukraine war to be ended in a very quick time and they want to get the quick victory. Before the war, before the war started, Russia seems like it seems to be very powerful because you all know at that time when the war started, the United States got humiliated. Uh, humiliation by getting failure in the Afghanistan region. So, by by getting this as an opportunity, Russia has tried to enter into the Ukraine. But what happened? The war has not going to end. It is going on for the last one and a half year and we don't know when it will end. So, the Russia is not getting the quick results for the war and they are moving towards the very long war. Actually, this situation he compared with the, the past instance when the Russia tried to invade into the Afghanistan, they tried to capture power in the Afghanistan. At that moment, Russia got failure by using this situation, USA has entered into the Afghanistan. You see the chronology. First in Afghanistan, Russia, USSR, at the time, USSR tried to uh, in, uh, enter into the Afghanistan region, they want to capture the Afghanistan region. But once they failed, USA failed in the Afghanistan region, USA took this as an opportunity to enter into the Afghanistan region to capture the uh, Afghanistan mineral power. But the author is comparing the same situation here when the Ukraine, when the Ukraine tried to be annexed by Russia, Russia is getting the very good uh, powerful backfire from the Ukraine. So, using this situation, the USA is now helping the Ukraine to get over the Russia. Actually, the history is repeating here. The author has tried to give it in a very good manner. The history is repeating, same like the Afghanistan and the Ukraine is also facing the same 
same problem with the same river base okay guys and the war is not going to end and actually the war is going like a war of attrition war of attrition means both the sides try to dominate others by reducing their strength by killing the small small amounts of the army this is the war of attrition okay guys see when the war is going on you all know even a normal civil servant aspirant you all know there is something internal problem going in the putin's inner circle but why the putin has failed to address this problem see if you see the putin once he was famously said that he would never forgive a betrayer but what happened the prigoin has did him a very big betrayal but also he led the prigoin to get asylum to the belarus and no criminal charges are created against the uh, that prigoin so what happened to that attitude of putin who once said he would give never forgive the betrayer and how did he forgive the prigoin the answer lies in for this question the answer is there is complex power structure in the russian polity polity what the author is saying actually if you see what is the problem in this inner circle first you understand that you all know prigoin was not in the favor of russia's defense ministry act defense minister who is uh, shoigu sergey ha uh, sergey shoigu uh, russian defense minister sergey shoigu has not provided that much arms and ammunition to the wagner group when the wagner group was struggling in the ukraine so this one started as a big feud between these two important group that is wagner group and the defense ministry so because of this it it ultimately led them to the mutiny now why the R russian president vladimir putin has vladimir putin not try to solve this problem why he has not suppressed the wagner group why he has not suppressed the defense minister But what is the importance of both these people actually if you see in the russian polity both these party has the same power they are not party it's like a, they are the pillars of government russia need both the wagner group and also the and strong defense minister sergey shoigu let's see what is the importance of sergey shoigu sergey shoigu see guys when the russia entered into the ukraine war at the initial phase of war it faced a some backlash they did not get the success in the initial momentum but because of this defense minister sergey shoigu they got the upper hand in the war and they tried to cover and capture the many region so the ukraine war if the russia is proceeding with ukraine war it is because of this defense minister sergey shoigu and also if you think in the past itself mr shoigu has delivered on crimea in 2014 when russia annexed the crimea it is mr shoigu who took the very good energetic action to capture the crimea so and also he did the successful military intervention in syria i already explained to you Russia invaded to Syria during that time also Mr Shoigu successfully intervened into the Syria you see even in Ukraine there was initial mistake when the whole west tried to come and help Ukraine the russian troops stand against this ukraine as a very good strong army because of this defense minister effort so if the president took the pillar major putin took any action against the sergey shoigu it will affect the morale of the military personnel so the belamid putin can't go on go against the sergey shoigu he want to sergey shoigu to be with himself because he is a, uh, he has very good belief in the sergey shoigu on the other hand we have the other group wagner group what is the importance of this wagner group and how does it become very powerful actually this wagner group has been created as a geopolitical tool for the kremlin that is russia what happens see the russia want to have influence in the african region to create the influence in african region they didn't send the their own army into the africa they sent the wagner group into the uh, africa what is the importance of africa africa is the resource rich region which, which has the uh, very good economic wealth in this area if once this area is uh, occupied or captured it will be very good beneficial for the russia so they want to influence the russian governments 
what the wagner group did the wagner group entered into the african continent they tried to influence the government members there and they tried to help the coup against the government and they captured many regions in africa so the ultimate success in the african continent for russia was brought by the wagner group so because of this act only the wagner group got very good support from the nationalist people in the russia and not only this during the russia ukraine war because of wagner group only the war has become very stronghold because you all know wagner group only captured the two important regions that is the soledar and bakhmut in the donetsk region because of this act only the russia got the upper hand in the war so it is very clear the wagner group is the very powerful people and they have very good support nationalist people support in the russia if vladimir putin act against the wagner group then it will definitely cause russian bloodshed in the russia so the putin don't want to go against the wagner group because of this dilemma it has become the ultimatum because of this feud between these two important group in the russian in the circle it led to the actually it it, it led to it, it led to a big challenge and danger for the whole russian nation the core challenge is if you see the russian leaders uh like nicholas ii or mikhail gorbachev they are not so active leaders but putin is not like that mr putin has very a uh, very active politics in his life see for the past 23 years he is in the regime he is ruling the russia in any way as a prime minister or the president so if you see the putin he is really a survivor uh, if you you even see when the wagner group stand against the in the blame of putin no one no one elitist in the russia stood against the Vladimir Putin that much of influence or the favoritism uh Vladimir Putin how in his country even the Putin security council all members stood with the Putin the president and the motherland they don't want to go against the motherland because if they help to the Wagner group ultimately the Ukraine the Ukraine will need take uh uh or is a lead in the war and Russia will face the backdrop so they all have very good patriotism and they stood with the blamodir putin if you see when the russian war has started at the initial phase i said you it st- it faced the military setbacks at that time what the putin has did the putin has tried the partial mobilization of army he tried to call everyone and the war has become the very strong after his putin's partial mobilization and also the author has tried to give you the situation when the first world war occurred during the first world war Russia has take the back step because of this Russia's back step it ultimately led to the state collapse you you know guys the Russians are very good patriotic people they don't want to lose war because they want their nation to get success in all the aspect if 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 the so much loving country if it get back back seat in the war then definitely it will create the political instability so by giving this example during first world war they did the back step so they got polit state collapse and the author is saying the same will occur if putin failed to win the ukraine war the ultimatum lies in the winning of this war russia should win this war otherwise putin will not be continuing as a leader it, it will lead to the state collapse actually it is the author's opinion let's see what happens in the future and and the putin also knows it clearly he want to win that war at any cost okay guys this is the very good article i thought uh, it will be very helpful for your exam just understand the basic things in this international arena because in upcoming exam cepf definitely i'll ask uh, they will ask questions from this regard uh, okay guys okay let's move to the other article india should refuse america's nato plus bite what is this nato nato plus Uh, why they are encouraging india to join the nato plus let's first see the basics there see guys these are the group group of nato countries okay, there are totally 31 country and the latest member is the finland 
uh, which is the 31st member to join the NATO countries. If you see, the NATO was first formed in the 1949. After that, when the 1949 they formed, it, it contains only few members. When the time has passed, the strength of NATO has also increased. The influence of the NATO has increased so that all the members in the European continent has joined with the NATO group. What is this NATO group? NATO group is a transatlantic military agreement, a military group. They try to have cooperation in the military related aspect. See, whenever any country affects any NATO member, then all NATO member together will attack that uh, host country or the enemy country. So, are you all getting this guys? Actually, this NATO country been formed in the 1949. Their first objective was they are forming this group against the USSR. They don't want to get affected from the USSR because at that time we have the bipolar world. So, we created the NATO. Because of fear, many people have tried to join the NATO and the NATO strength has been enlarged. And, and, and also you also know, Ukraine also want to join the NATO. USA has uh, persuaded the Ukraine to join the NATO. Because of this reason only, the Russian-Ukraine war has been going on. Now, we are not discussing this article from that regard. We are, uh, we are discussing this article because the USA want Russia, uh, USA want India, our India to join the NATO plus initiative. So before moving into what is NATO plus initiative, first let's understand what is NATO. NATO is a military group formed in the 1949 which possesses the 31 members. And the basic objective is if any country attacks the NATO member, all NATO member will holistically attack that enemy country. So this is the basic about NATO. And today they have 31 members. The latest member joined is the Finland. In future, within few months, definitely Sweden will also join the NATO group. So these are the basic facts about NATO, NATO group. If you see, when the Soviet Union was dissolved in the 1991 and the Cold War has ended in that 1991, they all thought the usage of NATO will decrease. NATO will not be relevant for the upcoming future. But what happened? We thought that, but the real happening is somewhat different. NATO has expanded its strength. NATO has not only survived the time, but also it expanded its strength. Recently, Finland has joined with, joined as the 31st member and also Sweden is waiting to join that wing. Actually, the NATO is getting more importance in the present days. Because what, what is the reason? Because you see, Russia has attacked the Ukraine. This situation has become the reason for the NATO to become more strong. Otherwise, the NATO would have been ended when the USSR has got dismantled. But because of many international reasons, the NATO is still surviving, even it is becoming more strong. Some analysts even call this NATO expansion as a Cold War 2.0. What is the NATO Plus initiative? You all understood what is NATO. What is NATO Plus? In NATO, we have 31 members. What is this NATO Plus? This NATO Plus is, it's all about NATO Plus prime members. Who are the prime members? That is Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea and Israel. These prime members added to the NATO, they form holistically as the NATO Plus initiative. What is the main motto? The main motto for forming this NATO Plus initiative is to have this strategic competition with the Chinese Communist Party. If you see the NATO, NATO is a very good, uh, it's not a very good, actually it, it is a legal and codified organization which have proper agreement for the NATO membership and NATO group. But the NATO plus is a totally informal group, it has not been officially recognized yet now. And just it, it it is in the discussion and debates that regarding the NATO plus uh, NATO plus uh, they actually try to join the members but they don't have any formal agreement for the NATO plus. What happens to join the countries in the NATO plus first to include these countries? The process of negotiation will take and the assessment of their compatibility with the NATO's principal obligations and the defense commitments all should get the compatible with the NATO's attitude. If you see, what is the NATO's, NATO's objective? NATO objective was they want to stand against the Russia and recent days they are standing against the China's expansion. So this is the basic objective of 
NATO and NATO plus. If any country want to join this NATO plus, the country should also possess the same attitude. That is, they want that country should also want to be against the Russia. The country should also be against the China. But if you think of India, India have problem with the China, but India will not join this. NATO Plus Initiative. Our external finance, external affairs minister, yes, Jay Shankar Ji, has already denied the request of USA that we Indians we don't want to join the NATO Plus. We want to maintain the non-alignment in this regard. Okay, guys, are you getting me? What can India get by joining the NATO Plus? What kind of benefits India can get from this initiative? If you see. This is a military group, right? Sec this is all about a security arrangement. Once we get into the security arrangement, once we get joined into the NATO Plus, we will get a very security protection because the whole NATO Plus number 31 plus 5 and plus India, the, these all countries will stand together. So you, you can see if 36 countries stand together, it means our security, Indian security will be more strengthened. And also, we can get the military technologies shared between 36 countries. We will get very good military technologies. And also, there will be intelligence sharing regarding all military-related information. And also, there will be interoperability. Means uh, uh, we will share the defense technologies, uh, defense missions between our military operations. So, and also, it will ultimately lead to the India's defense strengthening and also, it can be helpful for our modernization efforts. We are trying to modernize our defense. So, this will be the benefit if we join the NATO Plus initiative. But if we have benefit at one side, definitely there will be some challenges at another side, right? So, what are the challenges? If India joins this NATO Plus, it will ultimately affect the strategic autonomy of India. See, guys, NATO is a group which has some objective for themselves. India is a particular country, if this as a strategic autonomy for itself, it think about its own particular national interest and formulate their policies according to the national interest. If India joined in this group, what the problem will occur to India? The India cannot take decisions in that automatic uh, strategic autonomy because they want to take decision according to somewhat in compliance with the NATO's principles, NATO's objective. They cannot go against the NATO group's principle. So it will be like it will definitely affect the strategic autonomy of India. So this is first point. First, what the author is saying, it will definitely affect our robust strategic partnership with Russia. You guys, you all know Russia is our very good friend. Even when we get security threat, Russia stood by us in, even in 1970s and 1990s. And also, whenever we get problem with China, Russia involved into the problem and they try to moderate the problem between India and China. So, if you see, the Russia is very important for India. If we join into this NATO plus, then it will definitely affect our partnership with Russia. And also, and the author is saying here, the Russia is getting over dependent on China. In this scenario, if you left the Russia and if you joined into the NATO plus, it will ultimately lead to Russia will go with the China and they will have good partnership. Uh, uh, we will stand against the Russia and China. So we India don't want this because we know after the uh, Ukraine war, Russia will definitely make a very good friendship with our India. Because they need some stability, political stability and economic stability. They are waiting for that. Once the war gets over, Moscow will become stabilized. So Moscow will try to have valuable partnership with India. So we should not go against the Russia. Okay. If we join this group, it will ultimately crumble our partnership with the Russia. So the author is saying we should balance our relation and we should manage our geopolitical consequences. So to balance our relations to manage our geopolitical consequences, India should always maintain the middle path. It should not join both these groups. Even it should not join the Russia group. It should not join the uh, what is this? Uh, NATO plus initiative. And, and also, the author is trying to give the another challenge. See, the NATO is now acting against the threats, po threats, threats posed by the China. So, the USA and the NATO group want India to join the NATO because you all know India shares border with the China. So, if they want to counter China, they need India's help and India need their help. So, they, they are thinking 
India will join them. But if India joins this group, it will be counterproductive and detrimental for India because it will ultimately lead the uh, lead to uh, affect. It will lead to limit our freedom of action. We cannot take our own action. We cannot think independently to what to do at particular problem. Because if we get any problem, we want to ask the NATO what will be our next step. So th this will ultimately affect our India's independence and also. NATO has different strategy with the Taiwan problem and they have different strategy for the China's expansion. India have different opinion about the China's expansion. Even though we have Chinese border problem with us, we have military intrusion against each other. We don't want to join the military groups which is totally against the China because in future it may be, it will be counterproductive and detrimental to the India. And third perspective. Yes, obviously it will affect our strategic autonomy because we cannot take decision according to our own interest. In national, international arena, always remember guys, your nation's own interest will prevail. Then other things, whatever it may be, your personal things or your public life, anything, your national interest should prevail. prevail. So, our national interest is we want to maintain our autonomy. So, we should not join this NATO plus initiative because if we, if we join this, this NATO framework would require India to align its defense and security policies with the objectives and strategies of the alliance. I have already discussed with you guys, we want to make our policies somewhat compliant with these NATO's objectives. It will be not possible for us. You all know guys, we have been following the non-alignment movement from our past history. If we join this group, then our middle path will be broken. We will be getting into the one side of the bipolar world. Then it will lead to the death of non-alignment. And also it will strain our relationship with our neighbors and our regional organizations. You all know we have SAR, BRICS, BIMSTEC. These regional organizations will look India as a threat to the autonomy. Because India has joined the NATO, then it will ultimately lead to creation of some fear in our neighbors and regional organizations it will limit our flexibility in the geopolitical arena so the author is saying india should not join the nato plus initiative and what is saying the Na what is the india's priority actually if you see india have certain challenges with it already it have internal security problem it has a terrorism problem and also it have regional conflict if india have this much challenges these are the priorities for india india should work upon these things but if you think the nato nato want to cover all over the eurasia and the Afri american continent so they will focus on the very big region they have different problems they have different priorities, but India have different priorities. If India joins this group, then ultimately India cannot focus on its own interest. It will focus on the NATO's interest. This will ultimately lead to the loss of energy and money in this NATO's interest only. India cannot work on its own interest. So because, uh, because of these challenges, the author is saying we already have one very good group, which is the NATO uh, quad group. The Russia, China sees this quad, quad group as a Asian NATO, see, the quad group is a better option. We should not join the NATO. This is the author's view regarding the our relation with Russia, USA and China. So it is a very balanced article, guys. I found it very interesting. Thank you so much for listening the article. And if you like the video, please press the like button. If you want to suggest me anything, touch the comment, comment, comment button and give some comments. And uh, I can improve whatever the suggestion you, you give to me. And if you like the video, please don't forget to press the subscribe button along with it also press the bell icon button so that you get all notifications regarding our Bajira IAS Academy videos. Thank you so much guys. Have a nice day. Jai Hind.